Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday morning. All right. Hope everybody had some fun yesterday. I am still waiting on one person's address, but I've sent everything else off. Uh, so, Jody, if you are watching this, please get me your address. I need to get them to the companies to provide your prize. Hope you all enjoyed that. I will give a little plug for uh, Alaska Prepper here real quick. If you are not a subscriber to Rudy's channel, uh, you might want to, because Rudy's doing the same thing tonight, different prices that I did last night. So lots of fun there to be had. Uh, maybe a chance to add something to your preps. And while you're at it, watch some of Rudy's videos because he puts out some good stuff that you need to know. Trust me, I watch him every day. So just this, just something to say there. Uh, but here's the deal, guys. Is the public finally starting to wake up? You know, are they actually going, oh my God, what all these preppers have been talking about, what all these conservatives, patriots, everything have been talking about is finally working. You know, it's absolutely right. Some of them are. Some of them, like the University of Santa Clara in California, still have their head so far up their posterior, it's unbelievable. Just to give you an idea of what they're doing. University of Santa Clara is still requiring incoming students to have this for fall semester. Really? You know, I mean, personally, I hope their enrollment goes to zero. Maybe then they'll learn that they're wrong, but okay. But where I say is the public finally waking up. Let me give you a few examples. Some you know, some you know. You know, everybody knows the Bud Light fiasco, okay? And Bud Light's market capitalization is down over $30 billion. They are not, I mean, this is funny. Bud Light used to be the number one beer in the United States. What, four months ago, three months ago? Now they're not even in the top 10, okay? People are waking up. They're not, the people had said, hell no, this ain't happening. A couple of weeks ago, 4th of July, you had Ben and Jerry's within three days. You know, they lost $2 billion in market cap. Those people said, no, we're not supporting you if this is what you believe. Let's take a look at a couple other ones. Came out yesterday. Disney World, you know, where you can go spend $10,000 for a week-long vacation, is practically empty. Nobody's going to Disney World. Why? Because the little children's fantasy land, you know, it's supposed to be all about the kids, all about the kids. Nobody's going. Disney wound up so woke with bringing all their groomers in and, you know, some guy in a Mickey Mouse costume, you know, thinking, hey, it's cool, you know, I'll just grab some kid or whatever, you know, teach him the, the benefits of, Immoral activity. Let's just put it that way. You know, take, uh, I mean, anything that you've got going on. You know, even politicians are waking up. Yesterday, you had yet another Democrat go, I'm done with the Democrat Party, you know, gone. Uh, Mesha Maynard from Georgia, from an Atlanta, Atlanta suburb, okay, Black woman bailed on the Democrats. Washington, you know, federal representative, U.S. representative here, bailed on the Democrats and literally quoted Ronald Reagan says, I didn't leave the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party left me. Okay. You know, as she put it, you know, she says, the Democrats have, em have embraced radicalism, lawlessness, and put the interest of illegal aliens over the interest of Americans. You know, she also said she absolutely does not stand behind the teachers' union when it comes to choosing between what the teachers' union wants to indoctrinate your kids with and what your kids, what's in the best interest of her kids. Like she said, 3% of the students in her uh, 
district have a proficiency have any proficiency in reading? Three percent. That's Democrat policies. Okay, she also said they can't do simple math. But yeah, let's support those teachers unions because they're doing such a great job, right? These are examples of what we are all fighting back for. <clears throat> As we all prep, we prep for the chaos to continue, okay, and to get worse, and for China to go to war, or Joe Biden and the Democrat Party to destroy the American way of life. Like I said yesterday, you know, Bidenomics is so great, we've got people that are now eating out of dumpsters, because, you know, that's the symbol of a, of a thriving economy, right? The public is getting loud, very loud, and we need to get louder. I've said this over and over and over again. You know, it used to be, don't put a sticker on the back of your car because you're afraid of your car getting keyed. No, actually, it's put two stickers on the back of your car. So the guys behind you at the red light go, hmm, you know what? I support that platform, that person, that whatever, too. Maybe it's not so bad for me to say it. I told you before about putting my flag out and then all of a sudden seeing other ones, okay? This is it. You know, we need to get louder and louder and louder. So the people hear us. So the ones that are sitting on the fence going, you know what? Biden really is a fucking clown. Go, maybe they're right. You know what? I'm going to try the other guy. I don't like his mean tweets, but I sure liked his economy. I sure liked his foreign policy. You know, I still liked when I looked at my checkbook at the end of the month, there was still something in it. Okay. <clears throat> it's gotten so bad that even the media is starting to turn on Biden. Okay. The media is deathly afraid of Trump. The media has tried for a while to push DeSantis as the alternative to Trump. And DeSantis's campaign is sinking like a rock. It's just not his time, okay? Again, we go back to 2020. There ain't no stopping the Trump train unless you cheat, okay? Which is obviously what happened in 2020. But when the media is starting to go, you know, Biden is a raving lunatic. I mean, you guys have probably all seen the stories of him screaming and yelling at staffers and, you know, not letting him do what he wants to do, which I don't know what that is, walk off the wrong side of the stage, fall down some airplane stairs, you know, gee, you know, eat his ice cream or, you know, go sniff some somebody's hair, you know, find his granddaughters maybe and take a shower with them. I don't know, you know, that's Joe's stuff. But not letting Joe do what Joe wants to do because, you know, Joe thinks we're, you know, Russia screwed up with their war in Iraq. Yeah. You know, what's Joe's latest bonehead comment today? He can't even say gaff because it isn't funny because he's the most powerful man in the world. But even the media is bailing on him now because they're afraid Joe has gone so far off the deep end that he's going to lose. There is no vi there is no viable other candidate in the Democrat Party that could possibly take up the reins. I mean, who? Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer. I mean, really? You know, does Gavin Newsom think anybody out of Cal outside of California is going to go? Yeah, let's turn the rest of the country into California. I want homeless people down the block for me. I want to have to maneuver around. When I'm walking up to the store real quick and, you know, make sure I don't step in some human feces. Yeah, people are really looking forward to that. You know, this is it. We have 15 months to get louder and louder and louder and louder. Because while we prep for the worst, we pray for the best, right? Well, God helps those who help themselves. If we're praying for the best and we help ourselves, maybe God will give us a little help and push us a little bit, and we can turn this country back into what it should be rather than back into what these 
communist globalists want it to be. Think about that. Put that hat on. Put that t-shirt on. Put that bumper sticker on. Walk down the street proudly with, with your gun on your hip. And if anybody asks, tell them, I'm taking my country back and you aren't stopping me. Pinball out.